Hey everyone! In today's episode, we're going to learn the different options we have in the 3ds Max Render Setup Common Parameters Rollout. To access this panel, we're going to press this button or F10 in our keyboard. The first section is Time Output. In this section, we can select the frames to render. When we start a new 3ds Max file, the single option is going to be selected by default. This option will allow us to render the currently selected frame in the time slider. The next option is Active Time Segment. If we have this option selected, all the active frames in the time slider are going to render. In this example, we can see that we have a range from 0 to 500. This is going to render 501 frames. To change the number of frames, we need to press the Time Configuration button. This is going to open a new window and in the animation section, we can change the start time and end time. For example, we can change the end time to 250 and press OK. We can see that the time slider now has a range of 250 frames and the active time segment has also been updated. The every end frame option is available for the active time segment and range options only. This option will allow us to render every other number of frames. For example, if we select 5, we're going to render the frames 0, 4, 9, 14, and so on. We can use this option to test our animations or even to create a Corona Render UDH pre-computation file. The Range option will allow us to select a custom frame range for the animation. This is a really useful option if we have multiple cameras and each of the cameras start and finish at different frames. This option is also going to render the two numbers we selected. For example, if we change the end frame to 100, we're going to render 101 frames, starting at 0 and finishing at 100. With the frames option, we can render specific frames separated by commas or a range of frames if we use hyphens. In this example, we will render frames 1, 2, 3, and 5 to 40. The next section is Area to Render. The first option, View, is going to render the selected viewport or camera. This is the most common option we're going to use for renderings or animations. With Selected, we're able to render only the selected objects. But I don't recommend using this option if you're working with Corona Render or V-Ray. Each of these renderers has its own render selected option. The Region option will allow us to draw in the viewport the area we want to render. You can press the Edge in the right corner of the selection box or the right click button in the viewport to exit or clear the selection. Both Corona Render and V-Ray have their own region options for the virtual frame buffer. But Corona is better as it allows you to draw multiple region boxes. The next option is Crop. This option uses the same selection box as region, but is going to crop the render to the selected area. For architectural visualization projects, I recommend cropping in post-processing software like Photoshop to have more flexibility in your renderings. The Blow Up option has its own selection box, but unlike Crop, or region, the selected area is going to be rendered using the full output size resolution. This can be really helpful if you want to create detailed renderings. The next section is the output size. In this section, we can select from multiple industry standard film and video aspect ratios. The best way to visualize these resolutions is by selecting the viewport and pressing Shift plus F to show the save frames. After this, we're going to be able to see the different resolutions in the viewport. The most common ones used for architectural visualization are the HDTV, the 6x6, and the 35mm options. But if needed, we can also add a different resolution and aspect ratio using the custom option. Once you have added your custom width and height numbers, I recommend keeping the image aspect and pixel aspect locked to avoid changing it by mistake. 
If you always use the same resolution, it is possible to add them to one of the four buttons by right-clicking it. For the custom options, we can select the width, height, and pixel aspect. For all the other options, if we change the width or height, it's going to automatically add the other number based on the aspect ratio. The Options section has a few useful settings that we can enable or disable for our renderings. The first one is Atmospheric. If this is disabled, none of the atmospheric effects in the Environments and Effects window will be rendered. This is used mainly to disable zombie ray effects. The next one is Effects. If this option is disabled, none of the effects in the Environments and Effects window will be rendered. A really useful option for Corona Render is Displacement. Disabling this option is also going to disable all the displacement modifiers and displacement textures in the scene. And the last option we could use is Render Hidden Geometry. If this option is enabled, all the objects, even the hidden ones, will be rendered. I recommend keeping this option disabled. In the bitmap performance and memory options, we can enable or disable bitmap proxies. For architectural visualization, we rarely use this option, so we're going to keep it off. The next section is render output. In this section, we're going to select the file folder and file format for our renderings. For architectural visualization, I recommend using TIFF or EHR for 16-bit images and EHR for any 32-bit images. This depends on the post-processing you're planning to do. Email notification can be used to get render notifications. You only need to know your SMTP server. If you're using Gmail or Outlook, you can find this information online. The script tab can help us to add pre or post render scripts. This is a custom made script that are loaded before or after the rendering. And the last option is the assigned renderer. In this section, I recommend changing in the production section the default renderer by pressing the three dots button and selecting it. After that, press the save as default button to save your selection. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.